Here's another 5 hidden gems that are pretty easy to platinum. And just like with the last hidden gems video, if we hit that magic marker then I'll begin working on a 4th instalment. Rather than aiming high like last time and creeping over the line, we'll go for a simple 100 likes this time round. And if you have not seen the previous videos, check them out and I'm sure you'll find something new to tickle the pickle. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get straight into the games. Lost in Random is an action adventure game that was released back in 2021 and didn't receive the love that it deserved. Having kept my eye on this game over the past 6 months, it's nice to see the Platinum percentage and Platinum Achievers number rising quite rapidly, specifically in the last couple of months. In a gothic, fairy tale styled setting, you'll be visiting 6 shadowy realms in the Kingdom of Random, where every citizen's fate is determined by a roll of a dice. Admittingly, the dice combat originally put me off playing this game, but that was a pure mistake, as it just meant that I'd missed out on playing this underrated gem a lot sooner than I did. The game will take you roughly 15 hours to platinum, requiring only a single playthrough providing that you do not miss any of the collectibles, which are pretty simple to find. If in doubt, use a guide, as the only thing that lets this game down from a platinum trophy point of view is that you cannot go back to an old realm, meaning if you've moved on with the story but missed something, you will have to do another playthrough. At the time of recording, there is currently just over 2,500 people with this Platinum Trophy on PSNP, with a percentage of 24.58, meaning that almost one in every four people have gone on to get this Platinum. Will you be adding yourself to that slowly growing list? Next up, we've got Chernobylite, a first person survivor horror game where you take control of Igor, who is searching for answers regarding his missing wife. As you sneak your way into Chernobyl's exclusion zone, you'll see what horrors await, all while having to keep on top of your own health and your base's rations. On top of the usual horrors that you'd expect to find inside Chernobyl, you'll be fighting soldiers with pretty deadly line of sight, meaning stealth when possible will be your best option. You'll meet numerous other survivors while exploring, and certain decisions can affect the outcome of the ending, something to keep in mind at all times. Admittingly, I brought this game quite soon after it was originally released, and I kept putting it off and off due to the survival part of the game, but Chernobylite handles it quite well. Just be sure to pay more attention to gathering resources than the main quest line, as and when you can. Chernobylite is by no means a masterpiece, but it's a very solid game throughout. The main drawbacks for me was the slight repetition of going on small missions every game day, and the English voice acting absolutely sucked. But if you can get past at both of those, it's certainly a game worth experiencing. If you are planning on tackling Chernobylite purely for the Platinum Trophy, then PSNP has a fantastic guide on there which tells you everything you need to know. The guide states that the difficulty is set at a 3 out of 10, requiring a single playthrough, and should take 20 hours on average. Make sure to definitely check that one out. Ghost Hunter originally came out on the PlayStation 2 back in 2003-2004, depending on where you lived. In 2024, with thanks to all the games that PlayStation Plus keeps reviving from previous consoles, Ghost Hunter remains somewhat like a ghost to many. Unseen. Is the game brilliant? Nope. Is the game funny? It has its moments shuffled into the cringe fest of dialogue. Has the game aged well? Absolutely not, it looks like trash. But is the Platinum Trophy worth it? I would say yes, because it is fairly basic and straightforward. The Platinum Trophy consists of just finishing every level, collecting only a portion of the collectibles, and a couple of pretty straightforward miscellaneous trophies. 
In Ghost Hunter, you'll be controlling Lazarus Jones, a rookie cop who's been sent to an abandoned school after reports of disturbances. While searching around the school, he accidentally lets loose a shed ton of ghosts, and the whole aim of the game is to capture them and put them back. You'll be guided through each level by a guy called the Professor, the OG Ghostbuster. You'll also meet the Professor's lab assistant, who is a friendly spirit and you'll be able to use her astral powers to get through a few roadblocks along the way. The controls for these sections are absolutely atrocious though, in truth. There is currently no guide on PSNP, but from personal experience I'd say the gameplay is a 2 out of 10, and a 3 out of 10 because of the controls. Just one playthrough and it should take you roughly 10 hours. As of recording, on PSNP there are currently under 500 Platinum Achievers, and the Platinum percentage is 20.81%, meaning just over 1 in 5 people go on to get this trophy. Blue Fire mixes a blend of action, platforming and contemporary influences and at the end of it all it manages to do something truly special. Taking major inspirations from Zelda, Dark Souls and even Super Meat Boy, you would think that this game would be extremely difficult and while some sections may have you pulling your hair out at times, overall it's really not that bad. You'll be playing as a little tunic wearing dude who gives off loose Link from Zelda vibes and the main aim of the game is to repel the darkness from the nearby floating castle of Penumbra. I don't recall there being a reason why when I played this and after doing some research I'm still none the wiser. Hey, it's a game, sometimes things just happen. You'll be tasked with doing void challenges throughout the game, which are like platform challenges. And luckily, the platforming in Blue Fire is super smooth, potentially one of the smoothest I've ever experienced. You'll also have a number of side quests, which does require a fair bit of backtracking. But there will come a point where you can unlock fast travel, which makes everything so much quicker and easier. The combat in Blue Fire is simple and basic. Just make sure you utilize the parry mechanic as it will help you out massively, although the window is very precise. The only downfalls to Blue Fire is the lack of a map and a specific ability which you need to find in order to progress. There are videos online if you were to get stuck, however there isn't actually a full trophy guide, but don't let that potentially stop you from joining the other 332 Platinum Achievers. Up next we have Cry Machina, which was released on the PS5 in 2023, and I expected more buzz around this game. Although it was advertised quite well, it was still quite a shock to see how quickly it fell flat and disappeared out of sight. Cry Machina is an action RPG hack and slash game where mechanical girls strive to survive in a post apocalyptic world to become real humans. The story is centred around Lieben, the newest recruit in a mechanical world where the leaders are all fighting over power, all aboard the last remaining spaceship which serves as the last hope for human resurrection. As you make your way through the story you'll have the garden which acts as a sort of home base where you can experience conversations between characters level up your character and swap, change and upgrade your weapons and abilities. The only downfall of Cry Machina is what comes after every garden visit. The small dungeons which don't look too dissimilar from the one you've just cleared. I didn't find it to be too much of an issue but could definitely see some people finding it to be very repetitive and bland. The high point though is certainly the combat, with it being extremely fast paced and feeling very responsive.
Cry Machina on PSNP is currently set as a 4 out of 10 difficulty, requiring a single playthrough and taking roughly 40 hours, the longest game on the list, which may also be part reason as to why as things stand there are currently only 178 users with this Platinum Trophy. So what did you think of the list? Do you think that you'll be adding any of these games to your collection? Let me know down below, hit that subscribe button, bang that like button, and hopefully I will see you next time.